Hi you guys, welcome to the first class of week 7. In this class, we are going to talk about The Rat Catcher. The Rat Catcher is a short story written by Roald Dahl. You probably already know Roald Dahl because he's quite famous and you've probably already read a book written by him or you've already seen a movie that was based on one of his, on one of his novels. I am going to give you a very brief introduction to Roald Dahl then you are going to read the story of the rat catcher and then we are going to do a short discussion about the story. Well, it's not really going to be a discussion. Uh, I am going to, or the book is going to ask you some questions and then you will answer those. Okay, good. Let's get started. We'll start by a short introduction about Roald Dahl. Uh, he was, uh, well, he has a Norwegian heritage. His parents were Norwegian, but he himself was born in Wales. Okay, Wales, you know, small part of the UK, uh, not England, not Scotland, but Wales. He was born in 1916. This means that uh, he lived during the First World War and during the Second World War. He didn't really uh, know anything about the First World War. He didn't really notice it. Well, not a lot, uh, that is. Um, but he definitely uh, had an important role in the Second World War uh, and the Second World War definitely had an important impact on his life, which I will explain later on. Roald Dahl was a British novelist, a short story writer, a poet, a screenwriter and a fighter pilot. Fighter pilot, of course, in the Second World War. He had quite an exciting life, uh, so he was a pilot and he was an intelligence officer in the Second World War. Now, what's an intelligence officer? Well, uh, you see over there that he worked as an intelligence officer. He worked with Ian Fleming. Maybe you already know that name, Ian Fleming. Maybe you recognize it. But if you don't, I am quite certain that you know the name James Bond. You have probably already seen a James Bond movie, um, or if you haven't seen one of the movies yet, you probably know who James Bond is. Well, he was a spy, and uh, the James Bond novels, the, the James Bond books, were based, uh, well, were written by Ian Fleming, and Ian Fleming um, was an intelligence officer. Intelligence officer uh, is what James Bond does as well, so kind of a spy. OK, so uh, Roald Dahl was an intelligence officer together with Ian Fleming. So quite an exciting life there. He was also married twice uh, and he had five children, of which he lost the eldest one, the eldest daughter. So uh, that is quite a pity for him, of course. In 1990, so already 30 years ago, he died from a blood disease. He is also quite famous, Roald Dahl is also quite famous because of the place where he wrote his stories. That was a shed in his garden. So you, sh you see the shed on the left of uh, the PowerPoint and on the right you see the inside of it. He had quite a big chair um, because he had some back problems uh, and he also used a walking stick to walk with. You see it over there. Okay, so he had a special shed, which was his place of inspiration, so to speak. And in this shed, he has written many, many, many stories, of which you maybe already know some, okay, because Roald Dahl was quite famous. Um, so he wrote quite a lot of children's stories, and maybe you know one of the stories that he has written. What stories do you already know? Okay, hopefully now you've thought of some stories. Roald Dahl is quite famous because he wrote The Big Friendly Giant, The Big Friendly Giant, um, the BFG, or as we in Dutch call it, uh, the GVR, the Grote Vriendelijke Reus. But he has written many other stories as well. Uh, for example, The Witches is also quite famous. Um, Perhaps even the most famous story is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You probably know that one or you have heard of it. Matilda, also very famous. Uh, the Fantastic Mr. Fox, Danny the World Champion, all quite famous stories. And most of them have been, well, a lot of them have been uh, adapted for the screen. So uh, they have been turned into movies. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory has two famous adaptions. Uh, one with Johnny Depp, as you can see. Uh, then we have Matilda, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Uh, so many of his children's stories are quite famous. Uh, 
Okay, but we are not here to talk about his children's stories. We are here to talk about this one, the short story, The Rat Catcher. The Rat Catcher is quite a dark story. It's quite a little bit of a horror story, actually. Um, and it's a little bit weird as well. But it's interesting in its weirdness. And um, you can find it in your textbook on page 166 to 173. So uh, a lot of reading. Uh, and in your workbooks, you find some questions over there on page 187 to 188. Let me take my workbook. So that's exercise 7.12. Take it. Uh, that you can fill in the questions, but we are going to go over the questions first. Good. First question. Right from the start, the author creates tension by his description of how the rat catcher walks. So it's, of course, the rat catcher is a story about a guy catching rats. I think that's quite clear. You have to quote the passage in which he describes, in which the author describes the rat catcher. Then, um... The second question, well, we are not going to answer that one straight away. First of all, I want you to answer the third question. So uh, answer the questions in, questions in this order. One, three, two. OK, so third question first. The third bit of description suggests even more about what the man looks like. Quote the passage. So lines 22 till 23. Uh, and then the second question, if you have read both descriptions, what does the second bit of the description say about the man? Who does he resemble more or less? Um, then uh, try to answer that. And then question four, the language of the rat catcher suggests his so social status. Give some examples. Question five, the rat catcher constantly seeks to impose his superiority in the matter. Uh, give some examples. So how does the rat catcher show that he is a superior person? Then, question six. In the sewer job, a sewer is in Riol, uh, passage he, Claude, calls a rat catcher exactly what he pre pretends to be. What name does he use? Then, uh, question seven. We don't do that one. You don't have to do that one, so you can cross that one out. Um, question eight, Claude proves to be very interested in the rat catcher's job, quote a passage. And question nine, there is a remarkable opposition between a repulsive animal, this it's, it's reason back in the deer, uh, and the voice of the rat catcher when he utters the word, quote a passage. So he talks about a rat and he does this in a very remarkable way. And then ten. The, then the rat catcher shows them the product he is going to kill the rats with. What is that product? So what is he going to try to kill the rat with? Uh, the rats with. Then when the narrator says that you almost have to be a rat yourself to be able to kill them, the rat catcher's reaction is surprising. How does he react? Then describe the rat killing procedure briefly. Is the catcher successful? What's the narrator's name? And uh, how does the rat catcher try to, try to uh, retrieve his reputation? So what's his new procedure? And it's something very horrific. OK, you just write it down in notes over there. Good. I hope that this is clear. Pause the video and then please come back for the answers. So, welcome back. We are going to look at the answers over here. So, uh, what's the first description of how the rat catcher walks? Well, that is, he came sidling up the driveway with a stealthy, soft treading gait, making no noise at all with his feet on the gravel. So, he's very stealthy. Um, uh, he'll stick him and he'll still, so you can say. He makes no noise at all. OK, then uh, question three. What's the third bit of description? Well, it says that the dark, the kind of dark furtive eyes he had were those of an animal that lives its life peering out cautiously and forever from a hole in the ground. And what do you if you do, if you combine those two um, descriptions, then you have to think about an animal. What animal do you have to think about? Well, of course, you have to think about 
a rat, so he looks like a rat, the rat catcher looks like the product, well, the animal that he's going to catch. So um, he is, he understands the rats because he resembles a rat himself. Then the language of the rat catcher is quite important as well. It suggests his social status. Give some examples. Well, first of all, well, you don't really have to give examples because I will give you an example. But he uses dialect, not standard English. And you see that over here. Whoa. You see that over here. He says, you works on the understanding that rat is a gnawing animal. See, rats gnaws anything you give them, don't matter what it is. Anything new, they never seen before. And what do they do? They gnaws it. So now, there you are. You get a sewer job on your hands and what you do. Or uh, the other example is this one. Another good example is this one. There you are, you see. All rat comes swimming along the sewer and sees the bags. In the back, he stops, he takes a sniff at it, and it uh, don't smell so bad anyway. Uh, so what's he do then? Okay, question, sub question here, now that you are looking at this. Um, can you discover some characteristics? Okay, can you uh, see some characteristics in the dialect that come back every time? Think about it, maybe pause the video. Okay, welcome back. Um, first thing to notice was probably that uh, you have very often uh, a verb that ends with S. Like, for example, you works. Normally you would say you work. Um, but here you have and you works. Same with uh, words that are in plural. Like, for example, rats, gnaws, uh, gets a third person singular form. But uh, it's, of course, a plural form. So uh, often verbs plus S. You very often have N instead of uh, an NG. So anything instead of anything. Um, so they break off the ing form, actually. And then you have lots of abbreviations. For example, you see instead of you see. Uh, you give them instead of you give them and so on and so on. Now, uh, what's the effect of this? It looks a little bit like a dialect. And what does this show about the rat catcher? Well, um, if, um, a, if a person speaks a dialect, and this is something that has been done in novels quite often, if a person speaks a dialect, it looks immediately, that person looks immediately like someone from the lower class, because um, dialect is more often, this is actually some sociolinguistics here, uh, people from the lower classes tend to speak more dialects. So in novels, people who speak dialect are portrayed as people from the lower class very often. Okay, I hope that this is clear and that this makes sense. Um, so it says something about his social status. It uh, suggests something about his social status because he's portrayed like a, a person from the lower class. So you immediately get the idea that the rat catcher is not a very uh, high person. He's a, a little bit of a low class person. But still, although he's somebody from the lower class, he tries to act like, like a superior person. He tries to act like he is the man. He is the expert. And... Um, he seeks to impose his superiority. He uh, tries to act like he is uh, the best, the, well, the man, the right man for the job and the person who knows best. And um, an example of this is when he talks about the sewer jobs. He's like, really, like he knows what you have to do. He knows how, how to handle this problem. He is really portraying himself as an expert here. Uh, and then we have, of course, uh, let me enlarge this a little bit first. We have Claude that says something about this. Uh, he says uh, that the rat catcher is a Mr. No, or when you find this in line, on line uh, 63. Question seven, we were not going to do that. Um, but uh, question eight is quite interesting. Claude proves to be very interested in the rat catcher's job. And you say that uh, because he was listening, wrapped, he watched him uh, fascinated, stuff like that. If you have something else, that's fine as well. It just has to show that um, Claude is very interested in the rat catcher. Then question nine is an interesting one as well, because it talks about the opposition between the repulsive animals, so the, the uh, horrible rats, and then 
uh, how the rat catcher talks about them because the rat catcher actually talks in a very soft voice. So the word rats came out of his mouth, soft and throaty, with a rich, fruity relish, as though he were gargling with melted butter. So this is actually a very positive way of talking, maybe even a lovable way of talking. So like, it's like the rat catch loves the rats, and of course, maybe he does in a way, because he's uh, connected with them in some way. He looks like a rat, uh, he loves them, uh, because of course the rats are his job. Then question 10. The rat catcher shows them the product he's going to kill the rats with. What's that product? So what is he going to kill the rats with? That's a poison, of course. Um, and then the narrator says it, that the, the rat catcher, well, somebody who catches rats, uh, well, almost has to be like a rat himself. And the rat catcher's reaction is surprising because he agrees. He reacts very enthusiastically. Watch out, you have to use an adverb here and not an adjective, so not enthusiastic, but enthusiastically. And he agrees fullheartedly, so he really agrees with what uh, uh, the narrator is saying. Uh, he says it's true that you actually have to resemble a rat a little bit, you almost have to be a rat yourself to kill them, because you have to be able to understand the rats, you have to be able to understand how they are and what they are like. Uh, then, if you have to describe uh, the procedure, well, what does he do at first? He first tries to throw, uh, uh, throw oats around, and uh, he does that for a couple of days. The rats eat them, and then he thinks the rat, rats will... Um, he puts poison uh, in between the oats, and then he thinks that uh, the rats will eat the poison as well, but they don't do that. They are too clever for that. They uh, realize that there's poison over there. He's not successful, in other words. The rats don't, t don't touch the poison. Then, what's the narrator's name? Well, that's maybe a weird question, but it's Gordon. Maybe you found out it was in one line, line 203. It's only mentioned once. So that's if you're a careful reader, of course. And then, uh, finally, uh, what does the rat catcher do? And that's, of course, the most horrible and most horrific thing to do. More horrible than um, the rats uh, is the rat catcher himself, of course, because what does he do? First of all, he uses a ferret. He first has a ferret who kills a rat. The ferret was hidden in his shirt. And then uh, he kills a rat himself by uh, using his own teeth, uh, which is very, very horrible, of course. He's a weird guy. He's a weirdo. So uh, the true horror in this story is not the rats themselves, but the rat catcher. He is weird and strange. And, um, well, of course, you don't like him. He's just a bit of a weirdo. Okay, that was it for the story of the rat catcher. I hope you found it a little bit interesting and that you have enjoyed the story as well and that you've learned a little bit about Roald Dahl. Uh, and I hope to see you all hear from you guys soon.